There's a bunch of yellows in there. Yeah, get that bright one. Okay, that's our family, Dad. That's pretty Me, good. Goldie, Mama, and you. I am Jillian Christofferson, and I'm Gray and Golden's mom. And I'm Dan Christofferson. I'm Gray and Golden's dad. What about some of the things that we say before we go to bed at night? Gray is kind. Gray is kind. Gray is smart. Gray is smart. So everybody in the world has different eyes, right? They have different eye colors, different eye shapes. Blue, brown, black. Yeah. Yeah, differences can be special. Yeah. Growing up in Japan, I grew up as a minority, but I was a privileged minority. There was no escaping that I was white growing up in a country of people that really didn't look like me. When I first moved to America, I was really naive about what my culture was gonna mean in a different context, surrounded by white people who saw me and assumed that I was the same as them. The part where I have to consider my own white identity is the part that's really new for me and think about where I fit as a productive part of, of anti-racism in raising white children. Okay, Let's which try one? this guy. Wanna try these ones? They're really good. So these are foods that I grew up eating in Japan, snacks that I ate all the time. When I was younger, I didn't get to try a bunch of different snacks from all over the world, so having Mama introduced me to these snacks has been really cool. I grew up in Utah, mostly white people, not a lot of diversity. I didn't really understand how homogenous it was until I started to travel and where I started experiencing more diversity in language, in culture, in skin color, and realizing what kind of impact that had on me. Us having a little snack together can make you think about all of the different stories around food all over the planet. It can go like this. Food and cultures are special. Everyone is part of the biggest family you can think of. We really like to talk about their identity and their heritage in the terms of an unfair advantage that they inherited. Whoa, good job. Okay, great. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about where our family comes from, our ancestors. Have you ever heard that word ancestors? Yep, that means the people who came before you. Yeah. Our ancestors came over on the boat and, and settled in Utah. They settled on a land that was lived on by the Ute tribe. And they started taking more than was fair for them from the Ute tribe. What do you think about the word fair? It's kind of attached to the word equal. Yeah, yeah. And we are always trying to think about how can we make it fair for everybody? We teach our children that when someone is being treated unfairly because of their skin color or the way they look, we tell them to use their voice and tell them to stop. And then we tell them they can talk to us, they can talk to a teacher to help in the situation. Let's say you're at school on the playground and somebody is making fun of somebody's name. I would say, hey, that name Names can be special. You could be famous for your name. Yeah. And encourage that person to stop and say, that's not right. Yeah. When things happen, especially outside, there's usually a lot of people standing around that watch it. Those are called bystanders. But the people who don't let it happen, who step forward and stop it, those are called upstanders. They use their voice, like you said. They use their bodies. They just stand next to the person. And they know that it's more powerful than anything you can do. We're constantly trying to find a balance of realistic and honest exposure to the world and what's going on through a lens that doesn't overwhelm our kids and make them feel like the whole world is scary. When something really big happens, we try to make Gray aware of it, how it's impacting us, what's happened, even if it's something that feels kind of heavy. You remember we talk a lot about blaming groups of people, how it's never, that's never the answer, right? As we were talking about Asian American violence, he was really confused and said, well, what do you mean? Who were you talking about? It makes me feel sad. Yeah. It makes me feel worried. And he looked at me really confused and said, are you talking about people with black hair? It does reinforce that feeling that like hatred based on what people look like or where they come from 
is as absurd as our children feel like it is. And so trying to make him understand the full scope of how complex an issue racism is, but allowing him to keep that seed of truth, which is, you're right, it doesn't actually make sense. Also, Gray, when we talk about this stuff, we're not trying to solve it all. And you said, it just makes you feel sad and it makes you feel scared. That's the stuff we want to talk about. We want to check in with you. We don't need to fix it right now. We just want to talk about it. Tell me what you feel in your body when you have a hard conversation. I just feel like, let's do this. I can be brave. And then my body is like, whoo, we're safe. Look, this is Vanessa, the new girl in school. Yes? Yes, where is she going? Hmm. There are so many books with the main character is a person of color. The experiences are from people of color in communities of color. How does she feel? Sad. Do you think maybe she's sad because she watched her get her feelings hurt? Yeah. With Goldie, we feel like the conversation has to begin with empathy. So we try to do a lot of modeling, noting that someone is feeling a certain way. Look, what are they doing with their hands? Uh, holding them. Yeah, they're walking together. Right? Even within our own home, create an awareness to be able to sort of pick up on the maybe more subtle things about other people. Yeah. You got you. <laughs> you know, we realized we're raising two white kids and what that means in America and what that means for us, having learned what we've learned. And we're teaching our white boys to be empathetic and kind and know that it's our heavy responsibility to teach our sons and to have these really hard conversations with them. Just because someone doesn't look like you doesn't mean that mean doesn't that mean it's bad. It right. It's, bad. it's kinda great, right? So we can see how you kinda go like that and then we can scoop it into here. As we teach them honesty, it's that much more important that we are honest with them, with each other, with ourselves. <gasps> look. Its roots curled up in in a circle the shape of the bottom of the pot. <laughs> Who's someone who you feel like is in your community? Uh, my friends on the block. Okay. Mostly my friends on the block. To other white parents who are just considering working racial justice education into their parenting, I would tell them that it's not gonna be easy, but that that's the whole point. Parents of color don't get to make that choice. It has to be a part of the way that they raise their children. And the idea that white families get to choose feels so unfair. Empathy is when you're able to tell how others feel. I think it's really important for parents to trust their kids. We are here to let them know and to talk about it that they live in an unfair system. They live in a world that is this, and it's much better to equip these kids to understand this world and to help make it better than it ever is to sort of hide it or sweep it under the rug. And, and kids grasp these concepts so quickly and so easily. I'm really proud of you, buddy. We're trying to raise a generation that's better than ours or the one that came before us, then this is really crucial work. And that you're gonna get it wrong sometimes, and that's okay. And to try and fail and then say you're sorry and try again is much better than to just not do anything. That leading by example is really important and that your kids will watch you get it wrong and then watch you apologize and try again. And that will inform everything that they do.